Falun Dafa is a peaceful spiritual practice with over 100 million followers. Originating in China, it has been persecuted by the Chinese Communist regime since 1999 through a coordinated propaganda campaign and brutal physical attacks on those who practice, resulting in the torture of thousands and hundreds of deaths. On April 25th, members of the state legislature and other advocates held a press conference to raise awareness, in addition to announcing their push for a resolution to make May Falun Dafa Month. The United States is China's largest trading partner. We need to let our representatives know in Washington, Democrat and Republican, because all both parties are at fault. We need to say you have to have minimum human rights standards throughout the world. We have a World Trade Organization which doesn't talk anything about human rights, religious rights, people's rights, women's rights, children, pollution. It doesn't say anything about it. And we need to let the president and members of both parties in Congress know that this is a real problem. And if you're going to persecute your people back in your home country, we're not going to be trading partners with you anymore. And let's see who holds out. If we yank $300 billion a year out of the Chinese economy, it's not going to be growing at 10% a year. We're subsidizing inhuman treatment of your fellow countrymen. It's absolutely wrong. And when people say, well, it doesn't really affect me. I live in upstate New York. I'm somewhere else. Yeah, it does. Because the jobs are going there, the money is going there, and then we allow atrocities like you see in the photographs here to exist. It's absolutely wrong. And we need to send a message from every state in the country, as my colleagues have said, to Washington to let our representatives know something needs to be done about this. So thank you. This is the story of Zhang Liang, a practitioner of Falun Dafa, who has since fled to the United States with her family. Lang was abducted along with her husband on April 20, 2008, before the Beijing Olympics, by Communist Party members and plainclothes police officers, claiming to be the evil police. They were taken to the Dongcheng Detention Center in Beijing, sentenced to forced labor. Her husband had 12 police officers shock him with 10 electric batons simultaneously. The skin on his body was scorching as they activated the batons inside his mouth anus and on his genitals. After he lost consciousness, they doused him with cold water so he would wake. When he came to, they continued. The compound was filled with the smell of charred flesh, according to Lang. One man was killed right in front of her. Her husband was forced to eat food laced with drugs, making him feel as if his heart was beating out of his chest. This drug abuse lasted a full month. Later, Yang was moved with 50 other female prisoners to Mansaijia forced labor camp. They force-fed her drugs, deprived her of sleep for a full month, and day and night she could hear the crackling sounds of electric current, along with the blood-curdling screams within the compound. The stretching, where her limbs were pulled in four directions, was the most excruciating. She was stretched, with posts attached to all four limbs, more than 20 times. The longest session lasted three days and nights. During that session, guards used batons to shock her armpits, inner thighs, and other private parts. She went into convulsions, and her flesh is permanently burned. Non-stop, they played audio tapes defaming the creator of Falun Dafa. This entire months-long ordeal, she refused to wear the prisoner uniform, so she was naked, with male guards often assaulting her. Friends of hers died in police custody. In closing, Liang says her heart aches for her countrymen who are being tortured to this day, but she and her family had to flee. same thing here, and that's the ending of the persecution. Um, I can't express from my heart how disturbing it is to think about the suffering and the persecution that the people are having to go through. Um, and, and it brings anger in you to know that such things exist in our world. And I was always used to have a bumper sticker on my car that said visualize world peace. But I'm glad today that I'm able to stand to fight to make that vision a reality.